All right, what's up, everybody? Hope everybody's doing well. Welcome to another episode of A Fresh Perspective with Jeff Charles, where we prefer truth over narrative and principles over politics. And that first line is going to be very important for this video, truth over narrative, because I am in the unending, unviable position of having to debunk something yet again, something stupid said by yet another conservative pundit who, I don't know, this dude is just going for clicks or whatever. But before I get into that, please like, share, and subscribe to this video. Like it, click that like button. When it takes a second, hit that share button so that other people will watch this. And if you haven't already subscribed, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what's wrong with your life that you haven't subscribed to my channel yet. If you want to get this content, you got to subscribe. That way you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. Also, make sure to subscribe to my audio podcast wherever you get your podcasts on, on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, wherever you get them. I'm going to be uploading some new episodes um, probably this coming week. So stay tuned for that. If you want to support my work, uh, the links are on the, are on the uh, show notes below uh, with the, the PayPal, the Venmo, Cash App, all that stuff. Everything helps me to, to create this product for you guys. Also, remember that LibertyNation.com is a proud sponsor of A Fresh Perspective with Jeff Charles. Check out LibertyNation.com for all of your conservatarian news. We've got original articles and analysis, videos, podcasts, Liberty Nation Radio, and their signature TV program, The Conservative Five, all on LibertyNation.com, conservative news where truth matters. Now, let's go ahead on and, and, and get into this. Now, you already saw the title of the video, so you already have an idea of what this is about. Now, I saw this a few hours ago, and it was one of the most ridiculous things I've ever seen. And I, I don't know what happened to Steven Crowder, because that's who I'm talking about. Like, I used to listen to a show a long time ago, and I, I stopped listening to it, not for any particular reason. I just, you know, didn't listen to it anymore. I've done that with a lot of podcasts. But this dude, I mean, this dude, this is Steven Crowder from, you know, let's make fun of George Floyd's death fame, but pretend like we're just doing an experiment to see if somebody would die from having a knee on their neck for nine minutes. This is also the same guy who did that whole Amos and Andy routine when it came to black farmers to make fun of those. Um, I think I might have even done a video on that, but this guy has gone off the deep end. And maybe he was always like this and I just didn't notice. I doubt it because I used to listen to him every day. And yes, Steven Crowder would say some racy stuff. He would say some controversial stuff. That's what people who are in comedy do. I know like, he identifies as a comedian. I know some of you said, oh, he's not really a comedian. Look, if he identifies as a comedian, he identifies as a comedian. You may not like his comedy. And in, 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 in these cases, I don't either. Then again, I don't think he was trying to be funny with this video that he made. But it does seem like he was trying to be deceptive. <laughs> or either that or he just didn't want to do his due diligence or he wasn't interested. Um, and I don't use the word lie. lie um, liberally, because I think a lot of times people are just mistaken. But when it comes to people who are pundits or commentators like myself, to me, if they don't do their due diligence to make sure that they're telling the truth about something and that, and that they're more concerned with promoting a narrative, I call that deceptive. Because even if you don't know better, you should have. And you chose not to because you didn't do your due diligence that you could have easily found out. And you're, you're going to see that with this video that he did. I'm going to put it up right now. And this is basically and about. Well, oh, this is basically about. Let me pause. It, it comes directly. From so this is about Martin Luther King, and of course he released this on Martin Luther King Day because that's just what you do when you want to promote a false narrative about Martin Luther King. You wait until the day that we celebrate him. Now, the thing about this, the claim that Crowder is making here, is that Martin Luther King wasn't as much about nonviolence as we think he is. That, that's the claim he's making here, that Martin Luther King was not that much about nonviolence. And I'm not gonna say too much more about it because I'm just gonna go through the video and let you see it for yourself, but it's gonna be pretty apparent early on why his argument is ridiculous, all right? Let me get a little sip from my magic water jug. <clears throat> all right, you ready? Here we go. Well, here's the thing. Everything we're everything. about to share with you comes directly from congressional records, archived newspapers, MLK's own speeches. And I know the FBI is not an organization that I trust. Okay, I want to be very clear. 
Very interesting how people of this type don't trust the FBI until it comes to this subject. And mind you, I'm not saying that all conservatives feel this way. As a matter of fact, I think most don't. I saw him getting dragged a little bit by other conservatives. But the fact still remains. I mean, if you're going to look for an example of the FBI lying about American citizens, look at what they did with MLK, even Malcolm X, even the Black Panthers. I'm not saying the Black Panthers were perfect. I don't agree with every single thing Malcolm X said. I don't agree with everything that Martin Luther King Jr. said. But it's pretty well known that the FBI under J. Edgar Hoover would make shit up about him. I mean, that th th they that's just what they did. And they still do that to a certain extent with other people. But just wanted to throw that in there. Don't trust the FBI unless, unless it comports with the narrative that you're trying to disseminate. Let's keep going. However, none of the, none of the evidence that we'll be uh, providing for you here uh, it has actually been refuted by anyone in the MLK camps. Yeah, they just don't like how they obtained it. Yeah, you're, you're going to see in a second why it hasn't been refuted, at least when it comes to nonviolence. Now, he's about to mention something else here, and I'll comment on it when he does it. It's, right. It was surveillance transcripts bugging. that were reported by a guy named yeah. David Garrow. Um, but he also, uh, uh, this is the biographer. He obtained these transcripts from the FBI. He was the official biographer on uh, MLK. He won the 97 Pulitzer Prize. So this is a man who was very pro. Mm. Did I say? You said 90, 87. 87. Yeah. Um, and the FBI uh, surveillance audio will be released in 2027. I don't know why they picked uh, that year. I have no idea. A specific year? Later. You know. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, oh, crap, it's getting closer. So um, <laughs> here's something that you probably know that uh, MLK, for example, let's start with this. Supported peaceful protest. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that is true. Sometimes. Sometimes. One second. I got to take him off here real quick. He actually said that Martin Luther King Jr. supported peaceful protest sometimes, not most of the time, not 90% of the time, just sometimes, like every now and then when he felt like promoting peaceful protest, every now and then he would promote some nonviolent protest. Now, and, you, know, you don't even have to dig deep into who Martin Luther King was to know that he was all about nonviolence. Name one violent protest that Martin Luther King led. Name one violent protest that Martin Luther King Jr. supported. You can't because he never did. He never did. At the very most, Martin Luther King was okay with the level of self-defense. Maybe not when they were marching because the idea was that you don't retaliate, which was a very smart PR move because it made the people, the, the white races, look bad. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Martin Luther King Jr. Didn't, wasn't against the idea of self-defense, like as in if you're if if you're back in the '60s and you're a black guy walking down the street and you know a white racist a group of white racists accost you and you have a gun, you can use it. As a matter of fact, Martin Luther King Jr. tried to get a gun permit. Now uh, he was denied for obvious reasons, but I'm pretty sure if Martin Luther King were able to have a, a, a gun, and I wouldn't be surprised if he did anyway, and somebody broke into his house to threaten him, I'm sure Martin Luther King Jr. would have shot him. I, that's just my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong, but obviously there's a reason why he tried to get a gun permit, right? He wanted to be able to defend himself. But when they were, were engaged in protests, in boycotts, in sit-ins, in demonstrations, he always emphasized nonviolence. He actually clashed with other civil rights leaders over this, like Malcolm X was famous for criticizing MLK for this. Now, they had a level of respect for one another, but they both criticized each other's approaches. So. Martin Luther King was very much about nonviolence. And again, you don't have to know much about him to know this. This is like his main thing. This is like the main thing people know about him. He was into nonviolence. Let's keep going. He also had some pretty, I guess you could say, unsavory opinions uh, about riots that I do think need to be considered because a lot of people don't know this part. And here's where the deception starts. Let's go. I can't wait. And continue to say to my brothers and sisters that this is not the way. And continue to affirm that there is another way. But at the same time, it is as necessary for me to be as vigorous in condemning the conditions which cause persons to feel that they must ga engage in riotous activities as it is for me to condemn riots. I agree with everything so that's, that's far. Mm -hmm. I think America yeah, 
must see that riots do not develop out of thin air. Certain conditions continue to exist in our society which must be condemned as vigorously as we condemn riots. But in the final analysis, a riot is the language of the unheard. Uh. What is it that America has failed to hear? It has failed to hear that the plight of the Negro poor has worsened over the last speech. few years. It has failed to hear that the promises of... Okay, so you can already hear that when Dr. King says that riots are the language of the unheard. You know, they're already trying to dis dismiss that as if that's somehow supporting... Again, his statements do not support riots, but he is explaining why they happen. And I'll be talking more about this as we get further on, but I'm pretty sure if you have an IQ that is higher than my shoe size, you can discern the fact that explaining why something happens does not necessarily mean that you are condoning it. The very thought, the, the very idea that it does is absurd. If somebody steals a piece of bread like in Les Miserables because they were hungry and they wanted to feed their family, I can say, I, I can explain why he did that. He was hungry, didn't have money, stole the bread. Does that mean I condone what he did? No, that's stupid. Let's keep going. Freedom and justice have not been met, and it has failed to hear that large segments of white society are more concerned about tranquility and the status quo. And as long as America postpones justice, we stand in the position of having these recurrences of violence and riots over and over again. See, and that's the problem is the open-endedness to it because, yeah. well, what is justice? Well, right now people are saying, oh, injustice is there are too many Asians at uh, Stanford. Yeah. <sighs> okay, here's a rhetorical question. Do, do any of you watching this video actually believe that when Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. talks about justice, he's talking about Asians getting into Harvard or Stanford or whatever Ivy League college he, he said. Does anybody actually think that that's what, that that's what he meant? No, this is in the 60s. He's talking about equal rights for black Americans, the end of Jim Crow, being able to vote, not having to, 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 to use bathrooms made for colored people, being able to drink at the same water fountains, being able to participate in American society. He's talking about integration. He's about talking about equal treatment by the justice system. He's talking about a whole host of things. These are things that most Americans agree with. He's not talking about Asians getting into Stanford. He's not talking about affirmative action. He's not talking about any of that. Although, I mean, he wasn't supportive of affirmative action, but he wasn't saying that riots happen because affirmative action isn't a thing. If you saw, if you understood what people went through, what black people went through back then, again, you don't condone the riots, but you can, but you understand why they happen. I understand why people were riot far more back then than I do now with the whole George Floyd riots. Those things, those were wrong, but I'm going to, I'm going to get to this in a second, but Martin Luther King was not for riots at, like Crowder is uh, suggesting here, but yeah, the, 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 it, Martin Luther King was not trying to be open-ended. I mean, if you actually know what he was about, you knew exactly what he was talking about. So I don't know if he's playing, if Crowder is playing dumb here, or if he thinks that this is going to kind of cause people to think, oh, well, maybe King was, wasn't talking about the justice that he was talking about. I, I just, I can't figure out what he's trying to do here. It, it's very hard to figure out the motivation, but let's keep going. <laughs> So let's burn down a Walgreens. Yeah. Right. Exactly. More specific you that. need to be a little more specific. And let me be clear, too, at another 1967 speech, and we'll get to the crack whores, and we'll get to the orgies. We'll get to all of that, which hey, a lot of you don't know about what? MLK. <laughs> Five things you don't know about MLK. Bet you didn't. Okay. I, I don't know if he talks about this later in this video, but or maybe, he probably talks about it later in the show. When he's talking about the crack whores and the prostitutes, he's talking about how the FBI alleged that Martin Luther King was involved with orgies, with crack whores, and a bunch of other unseemly type of things. Now, we already know that Martin Luther King, he, he was doing a little bit of creeping while his wife was sleeping. We already know that, all right? So what? 
You guys revere the founding fathers who own slaves. That was wrong too. But anytime somebody brings that up, you're like, oh, don't talk about that because they did such great things. Well, you know what? Have that same energy for MLK. Yes, if he was cheating on his wife as much as it sounds like he was or cheating on her at all, that is wrong. I can say that he was wrong to do that and still acknowledge the great things that he did. It's not hard. And yes, it's okay to do it when they're black too. It doesn't just have to be about the founding fathers. We can acknowledge flaws in everybody who's done something great. I'm pretty sure that the people that a lot of the people that Crowder reveres have some skeletons in their closet, right? Now, with the whole what the FBI was saying about crack wars and whatever, again, I, that hasn't been verified. Maybe that'll come out in five years in 2027. I don't know. But even then, I'm going to take it with a grain of salt because the FBI lied about MLK and other civil rights leaders all the time. All right, let's keep going. Expect to hear MLK and crack whores. What? Today. I have a dream of non crack whores at a Motel 6. Nope. No, no, no. <laughs> I don't think crack exists. You wouldn't then. go Motel 6. I'm probably not. Yeah, just, no. Motel just whores in general, then. <laughs> <laughs> so a 67. He's right. They may not have been crack whores. They may have just been regular whores, which I suppose I guess it's only bad when a black civil rights leader does it, but they don't care if they're other. Anyway, you know, what I'm, you know where I'm going with that. Let's keep going. Speech King said, by the way, he supported a president who was alleged to have slept with a porn star. I mean, it's alleged, but come on. We, we know Trump did that. We know that Trump was a sleaze back in the day. It's okay to admit that. But no, no don't let Dr. King do it. No, no. <laughs> Paris, I thought, oh, 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 oh. All right, let's keep going. Urban riots are a special form of violence. They are not insurrections. Ah, Disagree. Good to know. Said the rioters are not seeking to seize I wonder what he thinks about the January 6th riot at the Capitol. I, I don't know if he's even made a comment on it. Maybe I'll have to look that up. But he's saying that riots back then were insurrections. And I'm sure he would call the George Floyd riots insurrections. Now, if he calls the January 6th riots insurrections, I will disagree with him on all of that, but I will appreciate his consistency. At least he actually believes what he believes. But I just, I, you know, when I do look it up, I don't expect that he's going to call January 6th an insurrection. I just don't think he will. I don't think that was an insurrection. And I don't think that these other acts were insurrections either. But again, different standards for different people. That's why I call these people Sesame Street conservatives, because their principles aren't really principles. They're just based off of whatever supports their side. Let's keep going. Territory to attain control of institutions, which today they are. That's their stated goal. Black right, Lives yeah. Matter. They are mainly intended to. Black Lives Matter has not said that the riots were intended to take over institutions. Now, maybe that's their political objective. Actually, we know that's their political objective. But none of the leaders of Black Lives Matter said that the riots were designed to bust into these institutions, into, in, into these buildings and take them over and run them. You know, kind of like how they accused the January 6th people of doing, which is also absurd because obviously they didn't think they were going to take over the most powerful government in the world using their fists and blunt objects. They didn't fire a single gun. I mean, so anyway, that's that's a digression. But yeah, it, it, again, applying different standards based on a narrative. Shock the white community. The looting enables the most enraged and deprived using his word here, Negro to take hold of consumer goods with the ease the white man does by using his purse. This goes on. And again, King is saying they are a distorted form of social protest. He's glossing over that. Obviously, King, King didn't have a problem with protesting, but he called this a distorted form of social protest. That's not exactly a positive word. Let's keep going. A lot. If you look at some of his statements regarding riots and regarding violent protest, yeah. it's worse than I thought. I thought he kind of both sides it. He actually more often encouraged violent protesting. Now, keep in mind, he's saying that more often Martin Luther King supported violent protests. He has not shown that in this video yet, by the way. He hasn't given a single quote that says that Martin Luther King Jr. supports violent protest. Again, look at the side of hand. He, he hasn't shown anything. He hasn't shown you anything that says that MLK supported violent protests, but he's making that claim anyway. Let's keep going. Then he discouraged it, and that is probably disappointing to a lot. He's saying that he supported violent protests more than he discouraged it. Now, I'm going to read you something that Stephen Crowder left out. 
And remember what I always say about when the media lies to you guys, whether it's left or right, they don't typically lie by commission. Like they don't typically make up fake facts. What they do is they lie by omission. So they omit certain facts that might go against their narrative. So they'll leave stuff out. Now then, let's look at the speech that Stephen Crowder just showed. And just to remind you what Martin Luther King said, he said, um, he said, quote, and I would be the first to say, oh, wait, no, 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 let me go. Okay. He said, quote, it is as necessary for me to be as vigorous in condemning the conditions which cause persons to feel that they must engage in riotous activities as it is for me to condemn riots. So right there, he's saying he condemns riots. He just thinks it's also appropriate to condemn the conditions that lead to riots just as much. See? Easy. But this isn't even what I'm, where I'm going. What did he say right before that? You didn't see that in the video because that part isn't shown in the video that Crowder chose to show. Luckily, I was able to find it and it was very easy. It took me less than five minutes, which means he could have easily found this too. Probably knew that King said this and chose to leave it out. Maybe I'm being too cynical, but you guys know how I am. I'm cynical. I, I give people too much credit. Like Crowder is not a stupid person. He could have easily looked this up. I, what, where I'm getting this from is actually a, a conservative news source. It's the National Review making the argument that Martin Luther King Jr. was not pro-right. Because here's the thing. When the George Floyd riots were happening, the left was using the exact same arguments as Crowder to, to, to intimate that MLK would have approved of these riots. But he, this is what he said right before that quote, right before he talks about condemning the conditions that, that lead to riots. He said, quote, let me say as I've always said, and I will always continue to say that riots are socially destructive and self-defeating. I'm still convinced that nonviolence is the most potent weapon available to oppressed people in their struggle for freedom and justice. I feel that violence will only create more social problems than they will solve. That in a real sense, it is impracticable for the Negro to even think of mounting a violent revolution in the United States. So I will continue to condemn riots and continue to say to my brothers and sisters that this is not the way and continue to affirm that there is another way. End quote. So right before he talked about being opposed to the conditions that lead to riots, he straight up said, I, I'm not down with, with violence. He said, I condemn riots and I will continue to condemn riots. And he did. Martin Luther King Jr. spoke out frequently against violent protests and preached the virtues of protesting nonviolently. So why did Crowder leave that out? Why? There's no way that he did this research and didn't and didn't see that. Or if he didn't, I'll, I'll say, if he didn't, if he didn't know about this quote, it means he didn't bother to do his homework. Because like I said, that article took me less than five minutes to find. That was just a simple Google search. And I'm pretty sure Crowder and his team, they know how to use Google. It's easy. And again, this isn't even CNN. <laughs> this is the National Review. So uh, to me, it's let's, let's just give him the benefit of the doubt and say that he didn't know about that quote. That's still intellectual dishonesty because you didn't do your due diligence to actually find if the evidence that supports your point of view and also see if there's evidence that goes against it. So that's still intellectually dishonest. With somebody with, with the following that he has, he, he should make sure that what he's saying is accurate, but he didn't. And I would say it's because he probably doesn't care whether it's true or not, honestly. If he cared, he, he would have done his research. It's very hard for me to believe that he actually did his research on that. Because if he did, he's he is outright lying. He is being dishonest. Because in that case, he knows what he's saying isn't true, and he's saying it anyway. Let's keep going. Of people. Yeah, he's he's making excuses for people basically losing their minds. Look, I get it. There was so much. Okay, again, they're making that claim. Have they shown? that Martin Luther King Jr. was making excuses. Again, if I explain why something happened, it doesn't mean I'm condoning it. If I were to do a video explaining how Hitler came to power, 
Does that mean I like Hitler? No, of course not. Nobody's stupid enough to believe that. Let's keep going. Injustice. I have no idea how I would feel, but I probably wouldn't then go and burn down or rob a local store yeah. owned by other black people in my community. Right. And thing. I would never justify it and say, well, it is just as easy as a white man using his purse. Well, first yeah. of all, men and purses. This was beginning of the. I'm problem. talking hey, about hey, Europe, hey. Gerald. Hey. Ah, it's not a European <laughs> man bag, Stephen. All right. Well, it seems that he doesn't clarify or he's flip flops because there is another interview where he specifically says that riots are against the black community. Cause right. right. See this, this guy at least knows something about it, but I don't know if he's just trying to go along with what things said, but there's no way this guy doesn't know that this is BS. I mean, come on. He didn't flip flop. He's been Martin Luther King was consistent. He condemned riots but then acknowledge why they happen. If you don't know why riots happen, how are you going to solve the problem, right? If you see a problem and you don't know how that problem arose, then you can't really do much to solve it. Can't, this is common sense. Like a, a kid could figure this out. And they, the same thing that we've said before right. in 2020, it destroys their own community yeah. and it does the opposite of what you want it to do. And he says, you, you can, you can kill a murderer, but you can't kill murder. Well, uh, Pops Sprouters here, those ri the Detroit yeah. riots, which you were alive you for, that, uh, that really hurt the white man, right, in his purse. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't feel it at all. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. But yeah, he needs to, we whenever he says stuff fray. like that, he should have yeah. combined it with what he said later in a different interview. Yeah. Is he did. <laughs> he, I just read you the quote. He did. He talked about, in the same freaking speech, he first condemned rioting, promoted nonviolence, and then he talked about why riots happen. <sighs> Let's keep going. And I apologize if, you, you know, if you're watching this, this video, if you're watching Crowder's video and you feel your IQ slipping a little bit, I get it. it, it I mean, the arguments are very dumb. After this is done, I would just recommend, you know, reading a few books and your IQ will go back up. I, I promise. Let's keep going. It, it hurts the black community to do this and then say they do this because that they're because they're being yeah. oppressed. Oppressed. You know what must it's be condemned just thing. as vigorously to, is the harming it. of your own community. That's what yeah, needs exactly. to be condemned right. just as vigorously. Think yes. of the Detroit riots. Yeah. And then they blamed what? White flight, Detroit riots. Like, well, first right. off, that's not what happened. Second, you burned down your own communities in Detroit. Yeah. Black people were harmed. And you know who got the worst end of that stick was mm -hmm. black police officers. They had to go home in unmarked cars because they yep. were being picked off by snipers on rooftops. Right. There is, you cannot yeah. find examples of riots, riots in the, from the 1970s onward that were targeted specifically, let's say, against just white people, which would be racist, but yeah. at least would just make maybe sense no it ends up hurting people in their own community yeah you know who else says that stephen you know who else makes that argument no i'm not going to say martin luther king jr because we've already established that you know who else makes that argument black people most black people most black people bring up the exact same thing they we don't like riots now, I get that you get a lot of these black progressive types out there who will talk about how riots are justified or they'll kind of couch it in, you know, certain types of terms and word salad so it doesn't sound like they're supporting riots, but they actually are. There are a lot of black progressives who support riots. We know this. The vast majority of black people are not progressives. The vast majority of black people identify as moderate or conservative, regardless of how, how they vote. Black people don't like riots. When we see this stuff on TV, we get mad. How many videos did you see during the George Floyd riots showing black people asking a lot of these white agitators who came in, these Antifa folks, how many videos did you see of them telling them to leave? In some cases, begging them to stop being violent. There are also videos of black residents telling other black people who were rioting or who wanted to riot, no, this is not the way. I shared a lot of those videos. A lot of conservatives shared those videos. And yet we have people, and I, and I don't know if Crowder would argue that most black people are for rights. I'm not saying that he's saying that. I'm not going to put those words in his mouth. I suspect that he knows that most black people don't like rights. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. You know, but based on this video, I probably shouldn't, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to do it anyway. Maybe he knows. But yeah, 
I think there's a general consensus in the black community that riots don't do anything good. They don't offer anything positive. They destroy our communities. And even if we were rioting in white communities, that would still be bad. Like Crowder said, that'd be racist. And that would be wrong. And committing that kind of violence is wrong. Let's keep going. And that needs to be condemned just as vigorously. Okay, so yeah, I guess he's done now. All right, so I just wanted to kind of, you know, I wasn't even planning on doing a video, but I saw that and I'm just like, I have to say something. This is this is just really stupid. I could have written an article about this. Maybe I still will, but this is one of the most ludicrous things I've ever seen. And again, he is using the same arguments that progressives were using to justify rioting. And they're both wrong. Crowder is wrong. The progressives are wrong. And there are even other liberals who debunked that talking point. Now, here's the thing. Here's what I really want to get to. Here's one of the reasons why I really wanted to debunk this. It's not just because I felt like doing it. It's not because it makes me feel to debunk something that conservatives say. I don't enjoy it as much as I do when I do it with progressives. But to a certain extent, I do enjoy it. But that's not the real reason why I'm doing this. Here's the thing. When Crowder gets called racist for saying this, I'm not going to feel bad for him. I'm not even going to defend him. And I've said stuff to this extent before. A lot of times, your pundits, they bring it on themselves. A lot of conservatives bring this stuff on themselves. And when they do stuff like this, I am not going to, I will not defend you. I will defend white conservatives who deserve to be defended from false accusations of racism. I do it all the time. But if you bring it on yourself, sorry, bro. You better, you better do something. You better clarify that stuff. Now, I'm not saying Crowder's a racist. I could, but I'm, I'm not going to go that far. I'm not sure. I mean, I don't, like I said, I used to listen to him all the time. I even met him a few years ago here in Austin when he was doing one of his um, Change My Mind segments. And at that time, he would make racial jokes, and I'd have no problem with racial jokes in general. I mean, if you look at a comedian like Gary Owen, he always makes fun of black people. But you know that it's not coming from a place of malice. It's not coming from a place of racism. So I'm cool with it. And a lot of times, Crowder would do the same thing. But over the past couple of years or so, or maybe it happened before that, and it just happened after I stopped listening to him, I just, I don't get it. But again, if he gets called racist for this, which he already has been, he brought it on himself. I'm sorry. But yeah, you don't get to say stupid crap like this and, and put out outright disinformation about MLK and racial matters and expect that people are just going to be okay with it. And I don't know if he's doing it on purpose just so he can play victim when he gets called racist or if he can use that in his podcast. I know some conservatives do that. I don't know. But it's, it's ridiculous. But here's the most important part of this. And I'm speaking specifically to white conservatives watching this right now. Does Steven Crowder represent you? Does he represent you in this video? Does he represent your opinions? Does he represent what you what you believe about history? Does he represent what you believe about Martin Luther King Jr.? Here's the thing. Even if you say no to that question, he kind of does. I'm not saying it's fair. I'm not saying it's right. But guess who the left gloms onto when they want to, to make you all look like racists? They glom onto stuff like this. They highlight stuff like this. They define you by the worst among you. And the left loves to do that to white people in general, but they really like to do it to white conservatives. They do it to black conservatives too, but they just do it differently. So here's the thing. These, when I say that a lot of your pundits make you look like racist, this is the kind of stuff I'm talking about. Because somebody who maybe doesn't know much about conservatives, or maybe they're leftists and that's just been their bubble, they see stuff like this and be like, oh yeah, see, look at that guy. That's probably what a lot of conservatives think. Now, that's ignorance, but there's ignorance on both sides. So I, I can't excuse what's being done here. So to me, we're always going to have people on our side who say stupid crap or who make stupid racial arguments. The issue isn't whether or not there are people doing that. The issue is how do we respond? Are we just going to let it go or are we going to defend it just because they have an R next to their name or because they identify as conservative? Are we just going to let it go because they're on our team? Or are we going to say, 
this doesn't represent me. This is not who I am. This is stupid. This is this is ridiculous. You know, all the stuff that we say that Democrats should do when one of theirs says something wrong, like when Biden says, if you don't vote for him, you ain't black. The stuff like when we say Democrats should be uh, calling that out. Yeah, we should be doing, we, we should be doing that, too. And we don't. Now, I'm not saying you got to cancel Stephen Crowder. I'm not, you know, with a cancel culture thing. I'm with the free market. If you want to listen to him, great. If you don't want to listen to him, that's fine, too. But I'm telling you, these, when you wonder why you're being called racist, yeah, it's dishonest most of the time, but these are the people who lend credibility to that, to, to that argument. And it sucks. Just like I don't like when there are black people who do things that make black people look bad, I, I would feel the same way about this if I were white. I mean, I'd be like, mm, that doesn't, mm, 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 mm. So I just wanted to, to bring that up. I wanted to talk about that a little bit. Um, and I appreciate you watching this video. Um, also wanted to remind you, don't forget to head on over to LibertyNation.com, a proud sponsor of A Fresh Perspective with Jeff Charles. Uh, like I always say, this is where you'll get a lot of the uh, a lot of conservatarian news, whether you're a libertarian, cons traditional conservative, or, or if you're an anarcho-capitalist, there's something here for you because Liberty Nation's team is made up of a lot of different people on the on the right who have different different beliefs. So you'll get, you know, you'll get the news, but you're going to get analysis and commentary that doesn't do all the spin. It has all the nuance and you will be challenged. It'll make you think. You may not agree with everything, but that, that's what I like about Liberty Nation. It's not like other websites where you're just going to hear the same regurgitated stuff over and over again. Like there, there'll be plenty of red meat, but it's going to be red meat along with your vegetables and even a little bit of dessert. So you'll be able to think. So just wanted to put that out there. Uh, what do you think? Do you agree with me? Do you think I'm crazy? Do you think I'm nuts? Do you think I'm really a Democrat in disguise? Let me know in the, let me know in the comments. I appreciate it. I, I would love to dialogue about this. But um, again, please like this video and please share this video. And if you haven't already subscribed by now, I don't know what's wrong with you. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. And until next time, keep your minds free. Thank you.